All right, we're going to run through the pre-lab for this. Uh, in this lab, you are going to need goggles and aprons. The sugar solution that you're going to be making is very sticky. You don't really want it on your clothes. It's going to be hard to get out. Uh, you're going to be using hot plates for this lab. In the lab procedure, it says to put it up to setting 8. That is for a hot plate that we were using at Rutgers over the summer. These hot plates are actually different. You're just going to turn it all the way up to high. Uh, this does take a very long time to cook, and we might run out of time if you put it on a lower setting. So Mrs. Rath and I will come around and uh, double check those as you go. Uh, for the sugar, you're going to need a lot of it. It says 120 grams. You might not be able to fit all that in the weigh boats, and I will come around with those later. So what you might have to do is put in 60 grams, dump it into your beaker, and then do another 60 grams. All right, so everything is going to go into one of these 400 milliliter beakers. Then you're going to be adding the water. The water could be tap water. That's fine. You're not actually going to be eating this candy glass. I'll have separate candy for you at the end. Uh, so you'll add the water to that, and you will also add the caro syrup. The caro syrup is very viscous, so it's going to pour slowly. Try not to get it all over the place. It's very uh, sticky as well. It's very sticky. When you're done with the graduated cylinders, leave them in the sink for now. And then we will be putting them on the cart later so I can put them in the dishwasher. So you don't really have to worry about cleaning that up or the sticky beaker at the end. I'll take care of that. All right, Mr. Rath, can you do me a favor and scroll down in the lab until you get to the reference table? Do you remember that from yesterday? Yes. Uh, sure. While we're waiting for that, the thermometers we're using are digital. They're going to be very sticky on the ends because they were used yesterday, but it's the same exact solution that you're making, so it's not a big deal. You don't have to worry about cleaning that first. Uh, just make sure that it's on. It does turn off automatically every few minutes, so you might have to click the on button every once in a while for uh, the extended time that we're using. Make sure that it is on Celsius and not Fahrenheit, because sometimes they default to Fahrenheit. So you just click that button once for that part. Uh, eventually, when you are done heating up your solution, and I'll explain how you know it's done in a little bit, you're going to be pouring them into these little rectangular containers. The idea behind this lab, if you read through the introduction, you're trying to make a screen for a candy-based smartphone. So this is basically the size that it would be. Uh, you want it to be fairly thin, but you can kind of play around. You're going to be using about six of these molds. So if you want, you can use different thicknesses for the glass, and then you can see how it comes out later. When you get to around 100 degrees Celsius, you're going to be at the thread phase. So what that means is if you take out a little bit of the sugar solution and put it into a beaker of water, and I have an empty beaker for you to test this out with, uh, it's going to form like little threads, which you could then take out, uh, and they'll be kind of sticky. You go through various phases in the candy making process. You get to the softball, firm ball, hard ball. You're eventually trying to get to the hard crack phase. That would be something like a Jolly Rancher, a candy that's going to be kind of crunchy and not as sticky as uh, a gooey candy like you would have earlier on. Uh, Temperature-wise, it will be around 150 degrees Celsius. If you overcook it past that, it's going to start to caramelize and it's get, going to get darker. So you want it to still be fairly clear. When you first start this process, before you get to the thread phase, it's going to be very thick because of the caro syrup. As you get closer to 100, it's going to start to thin out a little bit, and you're going to start to see bubbles. That's the water evaporating. That's supposed to happen. Just make sure that it doesn't bubble up too much so that it goes over the sides of the beaker. I didn't have any issues yesterday. Yeah, as, as long as they're stirring, that should be fine. Uh, it's going to go through a few different phases. Uh, as you heat this up, you'll see that there's a data table, if you scroll down a little bit more. Uh, it tells you, nope, scroll up. It tells you to go through every two minutes and write down the temperature. I want you to actually change that to maybe every three, just because it took maybe half an hour for things to really get going yesterday. So you don't have to change it all right now, but as you go, that might make things a little bit easier, so that you don't have to take the time as often. For timers, you could just use your phones. If you want, you can actually set the timer for every three minutes, or you could just uh, do like the running lap thing, and every three minutes you just check it. Uh, there's also a box for observations. If you don't see anything new, you don't have to fill in every box, but if you notice, hey, it's starting to change colors or something else is going on, that's where you can note it at the appropriate time. Uh, after that, you have uh, analysis type observations and questions, which you will not have to worry about until the end of the lab. We'll talk more about that later. We're not doing procedure two today, just procedure part one. Does anybody have any questions about anything that I've described, anything that you might be doing? All right, you can start to gather your safety materials. Most of the things that you need should be at your desk. If you have questions, please ask one of us. I will get the way boats for you, and I'll bring them around. All right, so you don't want to use that for the mass. You want to use one of these. That's where you're going to be pouring your finished product. So hold on a second. We're going to zero this out. Now pour it in, and you can see how much you have.
All right, so you're at about 30, so you're going to keep going until you hit 120. Uh, yeah, you're going to want to rinse and dry that up. What you can do is just press the zero button here, and now you can just count up to the 120. Are we using the graduated cylinder to measure the carousel? Yeah, you're going to use the graduated cylinder for that part. Uh, I have them spread out around the room. There's one at every front table. Is there like a funnel? That's a good point. I can get a funnel for you. Give me one second. Yeah, it's going to go into that beaker. A uh, funnel would be helpful for the caro syrup. This should work. Balsamic vinegar smells like feet. Is that 120? So how much sugar do you have so far? Is that all 120? Yeah. Okay, good. So now you're going to add the water and the caro syrup to it. When you get to the caro syrup part, they have a funnel that you can borrow. Make it easier. Is this already on? OK. It's on high. Yep, looks good. I like yes. something in this uh, cylinder at the bottom. Mm. Oh my God. <laughs> weird. Let's take a look. I think it's some uh, caro syrup from yesterday. I would use a different one just because this one isn't clean. Yes, you're using tap water. Where's our stirring rod? Is it probably on the thing? You can actually just use the thermometer for the stirring. Right. That way you don't Go have ahead. to get another thing dirty. Let's do frost stir it. No, we, no, One second. It All right. wasn't that much more, was it? Who wants to be the spokesperson for this group? Oh, yeah. You're not going to be on camera. You just have to say what you just did. What? I mean, I guess I'll do it. Sarah will do it. Wait, so just everything we put in the beaker? Yep. Okay. So one second. All right, so at this point, we have started to uh, mix all of our ingredients. So, Sarah, can you please tell us what you mixed together? Um, we measured um, 120 grams of sugar, and then we measured some water. It was 20 milliliters, and then we measured 59 milliliters of caro syrup, and we poured it all in the beaker. And all right. We're mix it. Looks good so far. All right, so here Scott is mixing up the sugar solution, and he's going to start heating it. At this point, you all should be heating if you have it mixed together. Put them on those hot plates. Otherwise, you might not finish. Hot plates should be on high. It looks like yours is starting to like lighten up a little bit. It's not as thick. Okay. We're not three minutes yet. Yo, back off. We're a minute away. Okay. Oh, this stuff smells good. It's sugar. Yeah, there's so much judgment in this. Who would have thought about that? Yeah, at this point, it's just a lot of waiting for the temperature to get to the right spot. You'll see some transition points along the way. What are you at? Yeah, before you get your readings for every three minutes, make sure you mix it around a little bit. You'll get a, a better sense of what the solution's at. 
Does it matter if the uh, thermometer is at the bottom of the beaker while we wait? No, it's not going to hurt the thermometer. It's just if you take the reading then, it's obviously going to be off. Right, I'm going to take some video once it gets to three. Yeah, that's fine. You're, it's supposed to jump all the way up to 150. Does it slow down? At, like, yeah, once, you get into the once it gets to the transition point for water, 100 degrees Celsius, at that point it's going to slow down a little bit. Too funny. Joe, do you make food in the morning? No. What are you doing then? I bring my breakfast in the So it cures in like two minutes. <laughs> no, there's no, two parts when we wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning. All right, so do you guys get to the three minute point? Yeah, we did. Okay. All right, so I'm going to do a close up shot. I just want you to describe the changes you've seen so far in the first three minutes. So basically. All right, so with this group, we are currently at the three minute mark, and they just mixed it up and took a temperature reading. So, uh, Megan, why don't you tell us what you've seen so far? So, it started out really thick, but since it's been heating up, it's become a lot more liquidier, like smoother. <laughs> All right, great. All right, so this group has just reached about 110 degrees Celsius, which should be around the thread phase. So uh, Sarah here is going to use the thermometer to try to take some of this out and put it on top, uh, inside of a beaker of cool water. Take a little bit more. All right, that should be good. And let's uh, zoom in on that. So let me put this down. Yep. It looks like we have some uh, threads forming on the bottom of the beaker here. 110. Yeah, 110 degrees Celsius? Yeah. Alright, let's continue to cook it. Alright, we're going to do a quick scan of how each of the groups are doing so far. Most of them are still bubbling pretty vigorously as the water is evaporating. <laughs> Looks like so far this one is probably the closest to completion. All right, so Sarah, what temperature are you at right now, and what are you seeing? Um, it's at 122.4 degrees Fahrenheit. I mean Celsius. Okay. And it's getting thicker and more bubbly. All right, looks like the clarity has gone away a little bit. And, uh, right now we should be in the hardball phase, so we have about another 20 degrees Celsius to go. Can you wear that? Can you wear up? Oh, we're at 137.5. So, so we should... All right, so this is the first lab group that has reached the hard crack phase. We're pouring into the molds. Yeah. Brian, if it starts to get too hot, then you can just uh, put it back on the hot plate. All right. Because it's going to start to go through the glove after the hot plate off. Uh, yeah, you can turn off the hot plate. Put a lot in the orange one. Favorite Put the rest in the bank. Yeah, the rest in the bank one. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Keep going, babe. Yep, just fill it up. <laughs> That's a thick bone cover. Alright, uh, actually, why don't you put that on top of the wire gauze? Okay, we'll clean that off later. Shane. It's really hot. Really? Alright. It's looking good. Uh, some of those bubbles should start to clear as it cools down.